And we're live. Welcome to the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast, Week 13 edition, brought to you by Roto Grinders and Run Pure Sports Collaboration. I'm here with my two boys. Uh, big, big week for us. It's going to be, I can already I can already feel it, but we're here with Bobby Gomes at DFS, at Bobby Gomes DFS, Bobby Gomes, million dollar winner, football savant, and uh, of course, JSU Rab, the guy who, Zumba instructor, gym owner, entrepreneur, multimillionaire, guys binked so many tournaments. Uh, so we're back for week 13 edition. Uh, how are we doing? How'd you guys do last week? What's going on, boys? JSU, you want to go first? Get in there, Bob. Get, get I feel in like there. you've been I feel like you've been doing shows. You're you're ready to go. I you mean had four yeah. shows yesterday. Uh, I I I too, but uh, you know we uh, we move through. Uh, some days you got got to do what you got to do. Some days you got three shows, two shows, one show. But uh, yeah, we're busy. Tons of content we're turning. Uh, you know, if you haven't checked us out, runpuresports.com. Get over there, check us out. Do a lot of the content for NBA, NFL. Got a bunch of stuff, so make sure you guys go over there, check it out. But last week, uh, faded Garrett Wilson, which. Didn't feel great. I mean, the guy just crushed. He, he that one touchdown, the second touchdown he had was just absolutely dirty. The dude um, fell down. I mean, the dude. The broke safety his, was lying yeah. on the ground, like with yeah. a broken ankle or foot. Just he still would have had a forty. He would have had a forty yard reception instead of. Yeah. He he got a touchdown instead. But it was still nasty. He juked yeah. the other one out of his yeah. shoes and, and and ran by another guy. Like it was still it was still and a sick move. Let but. me ask you this: Did you get off it because of the the weather? Right, like the supposed weather, or no? Did that? So I got off it at the projected ownership. I was like 30% yeah, okay. Garrett Wilson. I just can't stomach it. Forget about the weather. I just couldn't stomach it. And like, listen, if, if, if I knew he was going to be 13, 14%, I probably would have played him. but that's DFS in the end. I think the Michael Carter kind of later news with James Robinson getting inactivated, uh, you know, Dude, that fucked me so bad. I, I think everyone just moved some of their Garrett Wilson shares to Michael Carter because they said it's a monsoon or the weather's not great. I don't want to have too many jets, right, Kirkwood? Because no one was really lining yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You you feel Mike better Mike. with you feel better with one jet, and so you had to make. Yeah. Your so I think and what happened was we all fell for the same stupid narrative. Yeah, the weather, honestly, the it's weather. with the ownership. I think of yeah. Garrett Wilson. I think he was going to be thirty percent. But because of that, and Michael Carter coming in, people were like, "Listen, I'm not playing like two or three Jets." I'm playing. I, mean, I was in the I was in the Blitz uh, the Blitz Discord, and Cardi's like, "You have to, he's a must play. You have to have Michael Carter." Like, I just bought the hype. I was like, "All right, who, you know." And then and then I mean, the writing was on the wall from the very beginning that this was a running back committee, right? And like yeah, it was and, and it was I'll not it was. It. He, he I'll was say like, it too, Kirkwood, because I yeah. do the, the up the lock show. So, like, that news hit, and I was pretty much getting on the show to to do it. And I, I said to everyone, I go, listen, I, I, and I, I'll, I'll say this. Like, I, I faded Garrett Wilson, so I, that call was wrong. But one call I did have, which was on the show, was I still wasn't really that high on Michael Carter. I thought he was in play, but I wasn't, like, jamming him in, and I still had other, other running backs over him. Because of what you said, they said that Zonovan Knight was going to be his backup. They had Ty Johnson still there. They played three running backs. So even though James Robinson was inactive, I was still like, wait a second. They already said this Knight kid is going to be the backup. There's already there's still three running backs there. Like Michael Carter's a, a fine play, but I, I don't see him as a lock like I see Rashad White. I thought Jeff Wilson was still a better play. Obviously, you can say what you will about those guys, and Michael Carter got injured. So we, we got to take all those things into account. But I didn't see lock button Michael Carter, and I think nah, a lot know, of my, Michael were Carter was a bust. Him. That injury is baloney. It didn't matter. It was he was already the writing was already on the wall. He was barely getting any of the the, the touches. Yeah, but could he have gotten that? ten or twelve points and been? Like yeah, yeah, he could, could. It's he possible. Could've. Yeah, he yeah, he could have. But it, he wasn't smashing. He wasn't going to smash, that's for sure. Um, yeah, that screwed me up. So I listen to me. So I had uh, 
I, I, I changed my Yahoo and I spent very little time. So I sat there with the two worst freaking uh, running backs on Yahoo. I, I, and I, I like a fish just cause he was so cheap. I played Latavius old man, Latavius and Michael Carter. So that was, it was just brutal. Oh. But um, I also switched my main DraftKings. So I made like two grand on DraftKings out of like 11,000 worth of entries. I got like 13 K back. I four out of my five line. I had five lineups, four out of them cashed. I changed my main lineup to Michael Carden. I took out Garrett Wilson. I took out uh, I and I put in Michael Carter, just like you said, and uh, I felt like the biggest fish. So that lineup had eight K on it, and uh, just dusted. And 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 I swapped off the nuts. So I was all in on the the Herbert stacks. So I was telling you with James Conner, which was great. And I also I on Sunday morning I got on Zay Jones, and I touted. Zay Jones pretty heavily on Grinders Live and the show that Bobby and I did. Yeah, that was a really and, good call, actually. And he was like one percent, and he was the key. So, so I ended up making money and making up, but I changed like that whole. I would have smashed. Um, and it, and I and I. See, but that's Kirkwood. You saying exactly what I think a, a ton of people in the that, industry. Of course, did. it was the still. So, so, so it like, wasn't we, just it was, you. There was sharp people. You can feel like a fish all you want, but a lot of sharp people. They won't admit it, but they did the same fucking thing that you did, and you just got burned by it. Like, and you know what I did the week before? Do, though, I did Kenyon Drake the week before that too. So I, I mean, yeah. so like, uh, I see this week. The news, the news can really trip you up in NFL because uh, I'll say it, it. Everyone, see, this is the problem. It's the mindset of DFS because all of us also probably or a lot of us play NBA, play NBA. Yeah. and 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 so NBA in part almost clouds our judgment when it comes to these injuries. And I'll just, I'll take it real quick, but I also do all the up to lock shows for NBA and NBA injury news is completely different than NFL injury news, like completely different. You have in NFL, there's very little that can like actually just jump someone in outside of like, a stud like like a Zeke who who gets hurt and they have this guy like Tony Pollard waiting in the wings. You know what I mean? Like that's where you're like, okay, Tony Pollard, like load the boat. But in NBA, it's different. Like when when a star's out, there's like four dudes in play and we just jam it. Like at the Atlanta last night, if you played Friday night DFS, right? Trey Young gets ruled out. I mean, the Atlanta plays were just so good. Like I had three to four Atlanta guys on every single team. I, yeah, I had my boy, my boy, AJ Griffin. Yeah. I, I had him in my core. I had Jalen uh, Johnson in my core. They, uh, all these guys, they were just smash plays, but it, NFL is not the same. You don't just jam teams. Cause one dude's out, right? Like it's, it's, it's different, but Especially I think when you're jamming into a committee. Everyone's, yeah. And I also the, everyone's the, judgment. The gap, the gap in a strong play is much smaller. Than, than yes. like uh, from us, so it's like we should just hang on to our older plays that are going to be lower owned now, yeah. And and uh, but yeah, again, I, none of us were like, none of us thought that it would have affected the Garrett Wilson ownership like it did, and that's where we were all wrong. Like, even I didn't think that. And I'm sick, I'm Carter you know what? I'm popular, sick, I'm but. sick to like that. I'm like, I don't know, I feel like I'm pushing almost 10 years in DFS, right? And I still don't know what to do with weather. You know, it's like I still get screwed up in my head. Like, like, don't change your don't change your main thoughts because of weather ever. I think it's just like, little, yeah, unless it's just like a like a storm like you've never seen. I look at the Jets game. I, the problem was they had no fight on the other end. That was the the issue. But you know, Garrett Wilson, Mike White, those stats would have went even more crazy if the Bears could score. Right? They couldn't. Imagine if Justin Fields was playing in that game healthy, right? And there was actually some pushback. That that game might have shot out crazy, even in the monsoon. Yeah. You don't know. How'd you do, Bobby? I had a good week in single entry. I kind of luck boxed the Foster Moreau touchdown there at the end. But MME, like I'm still – I think I'm in the same boat as you guys. I made the same mistake. Like I went right to Carter. Um, lost my Garrett Wilson. My girlfriend's uncle, he jumped on DK last week. He said, oh, send me some teams. Like, oh, you got to play these guys. I just never updated him about the Carter news. He had Garrett yeah. Wilson. And then they he's like, oh, thanks. How much you winning? How much yeah, you winning? Yeah, yeah. Look, look at us. 
Exactly. Oh, that's exactly that's just, that's exactly what I've happened. done. The exact same thing to friends who like they, yeah. they just text me at like eleven thirty, and I'm like I just give them up. I just give them a screenshot of like like of uh, my lineup plays. And then they're, I'm like, just build off of that. They don't and understand. That, and then the thing is, is mine changes, and then yeah. the mine changes at eleven or at twelve forty-five, and I'm screwed. And then, uh, is there something to be said though? Like, if you're building multiple teams, to just have oh. a team that you're just like, I'm not touching no matter what. Like so these I are had, my thoughts on Friday or Saturday, and I'm just not changing them for this team specifically. I can change them on other teams, but. I, don't I had a bu- I had a buddy. He works over at the airport airport near uh, in Easty near uh, Kirky, and um, he made a Mike White team. And he works nights. He fell asleep, and he and he like right before he like he got there in the morning. He fell asleep at six. He like put his lineup in or whatever. Took out like Elijah Moore and put someone else in, but like. He literally, he literally swapped off the stone cold nuts and the millie, and he slept through the news, so he didn't know anything about weather. He put it in the wrong contest. I'm, I'm like, you're lucky, dude, that this lineup just didn't chip because he was like, at the end of like, like three court, he, he basically, he would have been like fifth in the millie with like win equity. He wouldn't end up winning because he didn't have Jacobs in the end, but it's just one of those yeah. things. I was, I was like, yeah, oh, that's the thing. I had the nuts if Jacobs didn't bust off that. Um, I had like the, the team, one of my teams was like, so nice. It was Zay Jones, Garrett Wilson. Um, it was, uh, Herbert and, uh, Keenan and, and D hop, like I said, and it had James Connor and, uh, it, it was, it was so nice. And then that till it wasn't that, that, what was it like an 86 yard touchdown in overtime or whatever it was. That was That's what it was. I didn't even see it. Too. I, I, that was I the other my... thing on my Friday shows last week. I talked about how I liked Josh Jacobs. I loved and him, and then I didn't play him because yeah, of the damn injury Q-tags. news. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking in my head like the dude got downgraded, but I just gotta stop. Like if guys are playing and I like them, I just need to play them. Like and and just take it, take the you know the T Higgins game. Remember that game where he 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 played. It was a an leg injury game, on a running back, but then he Q-tag. didn't play. Like, so that stuff sticks in my head. Like, what if he only plays 10 snaps and leaves the game? But I just got to play the guys I like as, as long as they're in, regardless of injury. Because don't you have to Josh acknowledge Jacob a leg injury or running back, though? We can, all, we can I always. Mean, he was 3%. Like, uh, I don't know. I felt awful, like, liking him and then not having not him, yeah. any of him. Like, imagine in 150 just not having any of him, but you loved him coming That actually league, happened like, to me in NBA last year. Dude, he was, he was in my main Yahoo lineup that I switched to um, fucking Michael Carter. Ugh, like, what? Talk like, about, just disgusting. Uh, all right. So we're back. We have a new week now to make many more mistakes or to write the write the ship, and uh, we're writing more the ship some here here soon, sometime here soon. I would say. Well, this is a good week to do it. Then we got, it 13, we got we got twelve games. We've got three monster totals, kind of. At least it feel they feel like monster totals after the season we've been having. We've got KC minus two and a half at Cincy, fifty three point total. I mean, Burrow and Mahomes. I mean, that's that sounds like a pretty juicy game. The problem is there's some pricing on in issues in there too. Mm-hmm. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but maybe that's a good thing um, if we figure that out. Then we got Jacksonville. My boy Trevor Lawrence finally comes through when I don't think I was on him um, uh, at uh, Detroit. Uh, the, Detroit's actually favored, believe it or not. Detroit minus 151. Um, some interesting plays in there. I mean, I'm probably going to go down and have too much DeAndre Swift again, like I always do, and then I'm going to be screaming like, "Why don't they just use this dude every play?" But um, <laughs> then I, there's the Chargers at the 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 Raiders with another juicy total. Uh, Raiders are, are one point favorites. That should be a good game, forty nine and a half point total. Then you got like two mid tiers, uh, Miami, who, who always seems to make for good DFS games at San Francisco, tougher spot. Uh, minus four points, San Fran with a 46 and a half point total. And the other 46 and a half point total is the return of Deshaun Watson, who just so happens to be going back to Houston against his old team, like set up perfectly, right? Um, with uh, Cleveland minus seven at Houston, 46 and a half point total there. 
We're going to have to talk about some Damian Pierce chalk running back, which I can't wait to fade again. And, uh, and so on. Um, as things I always like to do is I look at the blitz, most plays, uh, Blitz most plays, spitting out KC Cincinnati with the highest play total. Surprise, surprise, two passing offenses. That should this should be a pass heavy game, quick, quick pace tempo. I think it could be really juicy. Then they have Cleveland Houston. That kind of surprised me a bit. Um, then Cardi has Jax at Detroit. And then um the the Chargers at the Raiders. So those are those are the games with the most plays are all in, you know, in in these top tiers here. I always cross-reference that with uh over at ETR, the Thorman snaps and pace. Um, he's got the three up and pace games as Jacksonville, Detroit, Chargers, Raiders, and the KC Cincinnati. So that those look like the three key games, three or four key games here. And then there's a, just a bunch of other games, but we will have some plays from those games for sure. There are some good spots here. Um, but how do, what stands out to you trying to build like in your first build so far this week, guys? Uh, I mean, just, just kind of looking at the slate as a, an overview type slate. I think the three games that you talked about, right. It, it, those games are by far like everyone's looking to stack those games. Now they're three really good games. It could spread the ownership out just a little bit, but like for me, I'm trying to figure out in my builds at least which of those games I'm going to be under on because I just can't be over on all of those games, right? You, you got to take some stands. And I think my stand is probably the Detroit Jacksonville game being the lowest on. Um, not that you can't still pull a play or two from that game. Cause I do think there's some guys that are leverage off of certain situations in that game that you can play. But for me, it's like, I think I ranked the Chargers game the my favorite game. I, I think that Chargers Raiders game just goes absolutely nuclear. Um, love Justin Herbert last week. I, I love him when Keen Keenan Allen is like huge for that offense too because he, he's just a guy that he's like the most reliable guy. He just always seems to like get open when he needs to be, and and Herbert's looking a lot better. He's he struggled early in the season after that injury early. And I think now he's starting to slowly, he still talks about how it just feels weird. <laughs> like the, the injury that he had in there, like still kind of feels weird. So you could tell he's been dealing with this injury and just playing through it for a while now. But I think he's finally starting to like get back to the normal Justin Herbert type. And I think Keenan Allen is going to play a bigger part and the Raiders secondary is terrible. So I, I think that's my key on this slate is like, how do I rank those games? Which game am I going to be under on? And which game do I like the most and want to have like the most ownership, at least for my lineups invested in. And I, I think that's, that's where I'm at right now. I don't know if you guys have a take on that. Yeah. I feel really similarly like, um, I'm backloading a lot to those games, KC, Cincinnati, San Diego, Las Vegas. I think that probably the majority of people are going to be thinking the same way I'm thinking also. Uh, the only game I really see that I, I like in the 1 o'clock slate is that um, Jacksonville-Detroit game. But I feel like like some of that chalk may bust for whatever reason, and if it does, like it's just better to be a little backloaded. The Tennessee-Philly game, I think that's interesting also. Jalen Hurts isn't uh, really garnering the ownership he probably should be. Um, there's a nice little revenge matchup there for A.J. Brown. Really like Traylon Burks last week. He's under 4K at 4.6. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much my thoughts on it. I feel like wide receiver pricing is a little bit better than it was last week, and I think it is a little bit better again this week than it has been through the first 11 weeks where we can kind of – Go to some of these guys under 5K a little bit more. Sky Moore down at 3-1 or 3K, whatever he's at. Uh, he might be – he's in the 3Ks. I don't know if he's the man exactly, but I don't know. There's a bunch of – it looks like it's going to be a good slate, a good set of games. Well, how does it feel to not – yeah, How does it feel to not have to worry about Tom Brady? You don't have to – good. Him. Yeah, yeah. It good. But hopefully it's good for my bankroll. Yeah, you don't have it's well I didn't I, I didn't end up getting to him like I I, I took the, I went I ended up not doing that last week. 
Oh, thank God. All right. I know. Uh, I, I, I really had I, I it, was, it was a real tough your, decision point for me. I just Sunday. stuck in your head just a little bit, both of you, because even Kirkwood kind of took your side a little bit. Yeah, I said I kind of like. I said I, I kind of can get on board with Brady. Last yeah, year. so I hope and he got I, I just, you heard my you oh heard my God. voice when you were trying to click that name, and you were just like, I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. JSU's yelling at me right now. Tom Brady is just he's not in the winter right now. You can play a receiver. That's fine. You can play a running back from there. Just. Tom Brady, no, not yeah, Godwin. Godwin slaves. smashed. Yeah, yeah Godwin, Godwin smashed. smashed. That's the one thing I and wish I, I didn't, and I I didn't have enough to you Godwin. guys. I said just play someone, have exposure to Brady that way. That's where people get confused. Like, forget about the price tag. Oh, it's Tom Brady. The price tag, no. Like Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, they were the two two best quarterbacks on that slate. And yes, Mike White smashed, but no one played Mike White in the monsoon. There was like one or two percent that played Mike White. So yeah. outside of that. It was Herbert. It was Kyler. I still think Herbert or Kyler was on the Millie winner. Am I wrong? I can't. I can't remember. I, I'm pretty. Sure I don't it think it was Mike White. Yeah, I think it was her. I think it was. I think it was Kyler. It was one of them. I, I think it was Kyler. You're right. Um, because yes, the because I reviewed this lineup. The winner actually played a Kyler James Connor team. That was the yeah. that was the winning lineup. Um, but uh, yeah, so. That, that slate, QB, I think people just overthink it sometimes when we have, like, these plays that still, like, Kyler Murray came in at 10%. Justin Herbert came in, like, I don't know, probably around that, too. Like, that's not bad ownership on a slate where quarterback is terrible, but everyone still wants to get 5% of this guy and 20% of this guy and 10% of this guy and just spread it all around. It's just so bad when you have the obvious plays on a bad quarterback slate that was last week, I just, I, I don't understand it. I'll never understand it when, when we get that type of slate where there's just some obvious plays and obvious games and people were refused to, and the, the ownership isn't even insane. Like 10% for those guys is ridiculous. Like they should have been 20 plus on that slate. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. So let's start it off at running backs. We'll, we'll, knock that out first then we'll head over to qb give our thoughts there which we kind of just alluded to a little bit and then uh wide receiver tight end and then bring it home with the uh, bobby gomes dfs defensive segment and we will uh then give our favorite stacks um all right running back well we've got to talk about josh jacobs again because this is a great you know game environment number one i mean he certainly looked fine Right. He still has a, you know, still has a Q tag ne next to him this week, but you have to assume he's playing. And uh, I mean, the dude smashed. I mean, obviously that overtime, he was smashing anyway because of the way the slate was. But I mean, 33 rushing attempts, 229 yards, two rushing touchdowns, seven targets, six receptions, 74 yards. I mean, this is insane. Right. Like when he, when he's chalk, remember when he was chalk and he just nuked? I mean, then he just took it to a whole new level. This week, so this and you're, you're forgetting Amir Abdullah caught a touchdown too. So didn't he, or something like that? Didn't he get a touchdown or something like that? I am I, I, am I, I wrong? I'm I was watching. I was watching uh, uh, the Chargers. Or, or but, uh, he got a touchdown either way, but like still, uh, like Josh Jacobs got so much friggin' work in that game off of the injury that he had, the downgraded injury. He was smashed. I think he had 33 before that run, right? In overtime. Yeah, something around there. Like he, he yeah. was already the nuts, but like he became the he just buried people one uh, once yeah. that that happened. But um, and it was just so crazy because it was just like overtime, and then, um, and we were hoping for overtime in the Chargers game, and then they they go for two or whatever. Uh, that but, tilted the, the crap yeah. out of me. Me too. I, I hate I hate when teams but, do that. Well, uh, wait a second. I, I mean, so I got the Gerald. The right, I had Gerald it was Everett. The on the right. I think it, yeah, was, it was the, the right, right call, move. It was the right again. move. So I don't want to say I don't want to bash the coach for the right move because he did make the right call. It was just annoying for fantasy because I stacked that whole game. So I'm like, yes, all my teams are going into OT. I'm gonna get OT, and then I see him lining up for the two. I'm like, no, this is. This is awful. We're going to get the two, and they're just going to win. There was another game happened. where that happened last week, too. I forget what it was, but it was the same thing. They just went for two, and I was like, yep. 
It's it's yeah, it's the right call, but it's absolutely who who was that? Fucking was it? Um, I don't know. That? I forget. Yeah, I can't right. remember. Well, Either way, it was the right decision, but stinks for fantasy. Yeah, I'm not the right for decision for Team Kirk. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Team Kirk D's, that was a bad decision. He wasn't happy. Um, anyways, it's a nut matchup again, right? The, the Chargers now, he gets to face 29th in DVOA versus the run. Chargers uh, allow the fourth, fourth most DraftKings points for running backs per game. Um, they have allowed the third most total rushing yards allowed in the league. They're, you know, right up there and everything. They're the fifth most rushing TDs allowed. Um, Jacobs leads the league in rushing yards, believe it or not. Um, I mean, he's had elite usage and still, you know, 79% of the snaps last week. I mean, things are just, it. it's tough fading this guy. <clears throat> and uh, the Chargers, 5.4 yards per carry allowed. Most yards after contact. It's like every little thing I try to look up, it's like all in Jacob's favor. Only thing is, is he's going to be extremely popular. Should be. He still has that Q tag, but like people aren't going to, I feel like he's going to be over, they're going to over own to compensate for last week. I mean, like just like we were talking about, right? So he's going to be like the highest owned running back. 7,900 though. So there is room for failure. Um, behind him, we have Travis Etienne. Um, this is more game environment. Um, he's got a Q tag too, but all, all signs are that he'll be good to go. Uh, Coach Speak said he's he's not worried about it at all. He's good to go. Um, so, yeah, he's facing Detroit, right? Twenty six DVOA versus the run in the dome. Etn is like that. He's you just see his like speed and like that big pay, play potential out of him. So like a dome, just like you know, I, the antenna goes up when I see the Detroit matchup in the dome. It just feels like a really good spot for him. Um, Detroit's second most rushing TDs allowed, um, second in yards per attempt. Uh, in the last two close games that the Jags played, when this game does project to be close, he's had 20, 28 and 24 carries. So I think as long as this game stays, you know, competitive, should see monster, monster workload. Um, maybe you guys are, will, will be a little bit worried about Jermichael Hasty. I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe. Right, like he kind of uh, emerged out of nowhere, but um, whatever. Etn, good spot. Uh, right behind him, we got Kenneth Walker, seven thousand. I mean, he didn't have elite usage, but he has elite efficiency. Except from from a touchdown standpoint, right? This guy's getting touchdowns efficiently. Now he's also, I mean, his his line yes was crazy, right? He had fourteen rushing attempts for only twenty six rushing yards, so very inefficient. Uh, for, as a rusher last week in a really good game, but did have his two TDs. Um, but he has shown monster upside throughout the season. Um, this is this is a, another tougher matchup, the Rams, but like from a DVOA standpoint, but they're also missing some guys. I know Aaron Donald's going to be out, um, and this team just isn't very competitive on the offensive end, so that just sets up for a running back bringing it back against them. So Kenneth Walker needs to be discussed. And then we still have guys like Nick Chubb to talk about against Houston. That's the top match, you know, 30th DVOA versus the run. Um, they're a nice favorite. Um, this is a game where they should just lean on him, and he should be completely efficient. Like monster breakout runs are definitely in, in the, the range of outcomes here for him. Um, so we can talk about him. Aaron Jones is, you know, another really solid matchup. Um, and uh, against Chicago, 28th DVOA versus the run. Maybe that game could be a little bit sneakier. And then on the other side of that game, I still like David Montgomery. Um, you know, matchup. This is all about matchup, 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 right? Like against Green Bay, 32nd DVOA versus the run. So those are the guys that I've written down that are going to be kind of chalky that we need to make decision points on. And also all the guys that I like. So, First of all, what, let's get your thoughts on those guys and then some of your other plays that you guys like. Uh, take it away, Bobby. Yeah, I'm happy you hit on Montgomery because that's kind of – I liked him too, and I'm not seeing him really projecting what, like great, but it is a real good matchup for him. Uh, he's more of the middle of the pack guy for me. You hit off on Jacobs to start. Like I think Jacobs, like we've seen with the usage he had last week, it's really tough to get away from Jacobs. Um then there's the Damian Pierce question, and it feels like the projection slaves are all over Pierce. It's a good matchup, but he's also atta attached to Kyle Allen. So 
I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to be invested in Damian Pierce. Uh, Aaron Jones in that Chicago game, running it back the other way. I think he's very interesting. Chicago, another team that, like, their defense has kind of been decimated over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I don't mind going to him. Travis Etienne, like, you hit on all the spots on Etienne. Like, he's completely – in that dome, we should like you would imagine like the speed that he has would be able to really break off some like highlight runs. I, I, I ETN, someone I'm gonna prioritize. Kenneth Walker, this might be like a better pace game for Walker, like just like how it's gonna play. Like last week, it was more back and forth. This, they're gonna be kind of like it, it'll be more, more of a ball control game. So I could see Seattle. Uh, really getting the ball to Walker and feeding him. I like him a good bit. Um, do we have any idea about, like, the Joe Mixon situation? Like, is he playing, or what, what's the deal there? Still questionable. Still in concussion protocol. Is he ex- – um, He got – he did – he is – he got in three limited practices. That's what I'm reading. Uh, so, so he's probably – yeah. If not, I, I would I would have like some interest in P Ryan. I feel like yeah. I mean, he they may hold him out again. It doesn't. I, I don't know. It seems uh, yeah. it seems like he's actually like really questionable. You know, like you follow the concussion stuff all week, and you can kind of get a good feel that they're going to play. This doesn't look like that. This is kind of a little bit behind. Okay, that. so maybe P Ryan isn't, but like just with the ga- that game environment, P Ryan looked good too. Like I, I, I think P Ryan's like earned some more like workload in that backfield uh, just from how he looked last week. I've never been like a really big mixing guy. Um, Yeah. There's other guys too, uh, like Antonio Gibson at the giants. I think he's very interesting for tournaments. He's at five, two. He seems like he's kind of, he's the guy that we want in that backfield where Brian Robinson, who was like kind of the hype guy, I would just much rather uh, Gibson at this point. Um, Jerick McKinnon at four five in that Cincinnati in that in that KC Cincinnati game. I think he's a little interesting. Uh, just like if you're looking for stuff under five K and large field GBPs. Um, who else? Nick Chubb. Great matchup. Like I really like Chubb this week. It's Kirk kind of broke down all the reasons why. And that's that's probably it right now, from what I can see. What do you think in JSU? Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll start. We'll start at the top here. Um, for me, at, at the top, I think there's two guys that I, I definitely see as the two best plays, and that's Derrick Henry against Philly. Philly's been getting crushed uh, against the run, uh, especially the last few weeks. I mean, Dam- even against Houston a few weeks ago, Damian Pierce ran for like 140 yards almost on the ground. Um, which kept them kind of in the game or close. It was an island game, but uh, Philly's just been struggling, especially against the run. That's where teams have got them. Washington got them on the ground. Um, you even saw a little success from uh, Green Bay. It's just been tough for them, and I don't see why Tennessee coming in into Philly. I see a heavy dose of Derrick Henry, and I think that's the game. It's got to be the game plan going in. That's what they want to do anyways. And then uh, after that, it's Josh Jacobs. So uh, to me, those are the two best plays at the top. Uh, Nick Chubb would be third if I had to rank them. My issue with Chubb is, one, I struggle to see Houston keeping this game competitive. So Nick Chubb, I think he has to get there in the first, like, two and a half quarters. Two, I could see a little more Kareem Hunt earlier in the game, which means – you know, Nick Chubb could get him down there, and then we could see Kareem Hunt troll touchdown, um, which scares me a little bit. And also the Deshaun Watson thing, uh, we'll talk about him in a sec, so I don't want to get too much into it. I do think people will play him, though. So Nick Chubb could be some leverage off of the passing game, which I think will get some ownership. So that's a reason to, I guess, go to him in a great matchup. I just struggle to see how Houston keeps this game competitive. And you you guys can – like, it just seems like a game that ends, like, 24-6 to 6 or something like that. Like, it's just – they get up early, and then they just kind of sit on it, which I guess could lead to Kareem Hunt. But I think if that's the case and they get up early, 
You might see Kareem Hunt in there more. You might see uh, what's it, uh, Dearness Johnson. He, he, he's still there, I think, right? He's still uh, the backup or the third guy. Yeah, you could see him even get some snaps earlier than he probably would. So I don't know that you got to make some decisions at the top. I definitely rank it Henry and Jacobs one two though. Then you get in the mid tier. And I agree with you guys. It's kind of like ETN or Montgomery. I have a pretty strong take, though, on David Montgomery. And I, you guys know I don't like him very much. Um, I, I, I never really talk him up too much. But I think this spot is even better than people think. And there's two reasons for it. And the first one everyone agrees with, which is the matchup, obviously. But the second reason is Justin Fields is – coming off the injury report and he, they said he's good to go pretty much. So, so it looks like he's going to be in there, but I do not think they're going to want him running as much in this game. They don't want him taking hits, right? He's clearly going to probably have a little bit of a sore. It was a shoulder. I think that, uh, that took him out, uh, the week before I'm pretty sure. So they're going to be cautious with him. You saw a lot of design runs too, I don't know if you see as much of that. And what that does is those plays are run plays that they just designed for Justin Fields, which takes some maybe, you know, rushing attempts away from a guy like David Montgomery. So I think the rushing attempts actually go up even higher in this spot for David Montgomery. He's been getting like, he got 17 and 14 the last two weeks. I think he's in the twenties this week because I think they run Justin Fields less and it's a really good spot, uh, 6,200. So um, I, I agree with Bob, too. He's not going to project as well as some of the other guys in that range. Damian Pierce projects better than him. Uh, Travis Etienne projects better than him, which could keep his ownership somewhat intact. So if he still has decent ownership, I, I'm going to really like him at 6,200 here in this spot. Etienne, and uh, let me add Let me add to that that uh, – the threat of Justin Fields just being back there helps Montgomery mm-hmm. um, as opposed to what we saw with Simeon, you know? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just, just, just Justin Fields being in is going to help. Presence. Yeah, his yeah. presence. Yeah. His presence. I, threat I agree with that a hundred percent. And, and so, and then I, I do have ETN, obviously he, he should be looked at, but the last guy I, I'm, I'm going to talk up, and this is for tournaments. The matchup's really good. The LA Rams are going to be trailing in this game. Kyron Williams played like 70% of the snaps last uh, last game, and that was with Bryce in there. Um, but I do think he could have some heavy pass work in this game. They're going to be trailing 5,200. It looks like he's the guy they're they're kind of leaning towards. Uh, him and Acres are the two guys, but he he outsnapped Acres pretty good last game. I think it's more him. So this is just kind of a take, but everyone's gonna play Zonovan Knight in the cheap range, like forty six hundred. Kyron's fifty two. I don't think anyone's uh, really looking too much at Kyron at, at fifty two. Uh, he'll he'll have ownership, but not like crazy amount. So I like him a- as well in tournaments. I was thinking that, and the thing that stood out to me, you you nailed is that he ran twenty one pass routes. Uh, no, they to- like him for the passing work. I think for sure, uh, and as opposed to one. five to as opposed to to five routes or acres, and we just have to assume that this Rams team is going to be trailing everybody. Yeah. They're 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 down, Donald. This team is qu- I, like I. There's no way that defense hasn't already quit anyways. Like, I think I, I think that Seattle gets up early and it sets up well for Kyron to to get in there. And Seattle's given up some big games to some of these backs. So, I mean, we just obviously saw one of them. But What were yeah, you going to say, Bobby? Spot. No, I'm with both of you. I like Kyron Williams a lot also. Just seeing the pass game work. He seems like game script fits. Nice price. Um. We'll touch on Damian Pierce. I want to like get a final call on that at the end, um, but in a second. But like some of the other lower owned guys that like I'm trying to like weed through here. First, I mean I'm gonna play DeAndre Swift. Some I'm not sure how heavily. It just 
he had so many more chances to really have a big game against Buffalo. Like he missed the like first of all, he had the touchdown that was called back because it was like the half yard line or whatever, like his knee, his knee dragged. They had he had a ball that zipped that was overthrown a tiny bit where he was open in the corner that would have been a touchdown. Like he 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 has so many like red zone opportunities still that I feel like if they each week if they just would just play him a little bit more and like what are they doing with Justin Jackson? So I know it's like I'll, I'm going to be frustrated playing him like and I'm gonna, like it's very possible I see the same results where he just doesn't get enough work. You know, he only had five rushing attempts and against Buffalo, which I just think is criminal. But, like, he's cheap. I think I just want to be optimistic and feel like one of these games, they're going to let this dude go a little bit. And uh, so I'm going to try for that. But what are your guys' thoughts on Bam Knight uh, now with with uh, the Jets if uh, Robinson's still out again? So, now- one, I think – I personally think Robinson's going to be activated for this game. I think they want three running backs in there. That now that doesn't mean that Zonovan Knight isn't the number one guy. I, I think he's the guy that gets the most snaps. He gets the most work from the running back. But if if James Robinson and Ty Johnson are both a- active, right? I could see both of them getting like at least like twenty percent of the snaps at running back, which. You know, so it's like almost like a 60 40. Maybe it's a 50, you know, maybe it's like 50 50 between Zonovan and the other two guys. So that's kind of how I see that role. Now he's 4,600, so you can play him, but it'll all depend on if they are for sure both active and they have three running backs in the room. If they have three running backs in the room, I don't, I won't feel like I need to play them. If they only have two, though, that makes it different. I think then it, it more solidifies him as a fine play. I'm still not like gonna overreact though. This, like he's he's fine to me, but I'm, again, I'm not like running to play the Jets. Like unless you know, obviously there's only two guys because then it, it he'll probably have a, a much bigger workload than a 50-50 between three. I feel the same way. Like, I'm, there's no way if there's three, I'm not playing the, the Jets committee. I can tell you that much. The only thing is, it's like, how bad can he be at 4,600? Um, well, yeah, he's fine. That's what I mean, though. He'll be he, he he's a fine play. I think either yeah. way. I just think I don't need to play him as much if there's three. Like, I can still play a little bit, but I don't need to play a ton of him uh, if there's three. Is my point. All right, here's the issue with Damian Pierce. The only thing, like, it makes it a little bit different for me. Like, this is finally, like, a really smash spot, running spot, right? Like, their team sucks. Their offense sucks. They don't have Brandon Cooks. Their quarterback play is atrocious, right? They probably should get smoked by Cleveland in this game. But if they don't, it's going to be on the back of Damian Pierce the workload is that's never been an issue. That's why he projects so well every game is because the backfield is his. It's just efficiency, right? And it's like he, and he's good. I'm not, I've never doubted his personal talent. It's his offensive line that sucks. It's his offense that sucks, you know. And it and like and at the ownership he's been coming in, it's just been an easy fade for me. Um, this week I'm having a little bit more trepidation, you know thinking about this because it's like you see the matchup Cleveland 30 with first and DVOA versus the run. I mean, he very well could have success in this game. And if that's the case that they could just pound him, pound him, pound him. So I feel like it's a little bit different, but like, how are you guys handling it? Like my, should I just throw him out again or no? I think you can just keep him in and just don't go crazy. Maybe over the field, but just don't go like too crazy. I, I have him in currently. I just, if he's going to get ownership, I, I struggle to click his name. Like, it's just with that offense, the way it is, I don't know. I just, I, I don't really love it if he's going to get the ownership that he's projecting to get right now. i rather play some of those other plays. Like, I just think Travis Etienne's a better play in that range. Like, I just, um, we talked about David Montgomery I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm probably, I can't play everybody and he's probably going to fall as the guy that I just don't end up playing. 
who's going to project really well. So, like, if you don't like him, you either got to really under-project him and see if he still hits some teams, like, or just take him out. And uh, as of now, I don't have him. I, I don't have him in my pool, but. His ownership you know, doesn't look like it's going to be extremely high, though. Currently, it looks See, like he's gonna he's gonna be like in every in Yahoo where I, where I play like a lot of action. He's gonna be everyone's gonna have him. So I'm I'm probably gonna be like on be like the only guy without him. What about and I, I'm fine thing too? Here's the other thing too. That's one game where people do want to play some Cleveland guys. I will say we talked about some of these one one o'clock games. I do think that's a game where people are gonna want. Uh, some of those guys, and we're going to get the quarterback in a second. But uh, so, like, when they when they build teams, they want someone from the other side too. They want to correlate. They want to stack. Damian Pierce is just like the easy guy to do it with. That running back at that price, the pro- the projections, like he's just going to fit. So that's where I struggle with. I think the ownership is going to be. You know, like 15, 20 percent. Like, what are you thinking, Bob? Like somewhere in that range, or do you think it's going to be lower than that? I think it, it's going to get steamed up a bit, but currently, like, it's just it's sitting around like that range. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. You know what? Fuck Damian Pierce. Give me David Montgomery over him all day. Montgomery, yeah, Montgomery seems like the natural pivot. I, like I, I am such the up. Montgomery stand. I'm the only like. No, I'm with to, you. Right? I play, I I'm, I like him too. I've always liked him. I mean, I he he's he's not bad. Like he's this like everyone he, has, he gets such a bad rap. He, he gets a cold. horrible it's, rap. It's not it's not a correct take. I mean, I don't think he's gr- I don't think he's great, but I think he's great for this slate. Well, we're not saying he's a world beater, but like when he's in, yeah, in the context of certain slates, like he's not he's not the way people talk about him. They talk about him like he's, I don't know. It just he's like an afterthought every time, and it's the perfect leverage situation. I, I gotta stop Sorry. swearing. I, I apologize. Maybe we can edit that out. The, the the swear. You know, someone might be listening in the with in the car with their kids. You ever do that? I, uh, you know, Bobby, you take your boy out, listen to some DFS, take him to on a nice trip to New Hampshire, so you can uh, get your take, take take him to the rest stop on. Uh, <laughs> right, the first that that's what I, I took my boy his first trip to the rest of. Um, imagine the kid's thought process. Like we take this ride every week. We pull over, like when he's like five or six or whatever, and you just pull out. You're up there. He and puts it all together. This he is puts it I'm all coming. together. Like later on in life, what you were doing. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. Some any other guys that are like off fringe plays, like any interest in Cordero Patterson, in. Wow, we didn't even talk about McCaffrey, who with now with like Elijah Moore um, gone down, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Elijah Mitchell. Why did Elijah I say Elijah Mitchell's Mitchell's down. Yeah, I, I get those two mixed up more. Mitch, Elijah Mitchell, Elijah Moore, those names for whatever reason. If Mitchell's down, then I, I have interest in McCaffrey. Yeah, he's out. He's he's yeah. He's not coming back. Um, Dalvin Cook. Like he's per seventy two hundred. Like he's almost like forgotten about right there, right? Jet Ski uh, though. Yeah. Jet Ski's been keep, good. Keep forgetting about him. Keep, keep forgetting, forgetting about, about him. him. Yeah, it's not good for my Rainmaker team. I like. I, I honestly, if, so if it always can, comes back to your damn Rainmaker. Dude, I shipped. Team. I shipped a uh, a showdown because uh, I Did didn't you? have any. Car- I had. I put Jonathan Taylor in the captain. I put Michael Pittman. Uh, there and then I put not Najee Harris who got hurt in and then I only had one card that like even oh, fit. That it was, Najee it was, Harris wait no I, hurt, no wait, oh. listen, so the only card that I had that fit uh that was in that range was the I had Benny Snell so I just was like yeah put the backup running back in there and I shipped because of it solo ship damn you ship with Benny Snell so oh, another the Benny Snell touchdown really ruined I, my night. I literally I made one team in the contest, with, and I and I won. I had the Stone Cold nuts, and it got passed at the end by the damn Benny Snell teams. Uh, another pivot off game. Pierce. If Mixon were to sit in the best game, we would say on the slate is P Ryan. Um, yeah, well, yeah, he's a better, so he's just, a much better play if Mixon's out. I agree. If you just I'm wait. telling you, you know what? DeAndre Swift is going off. Is he going to play more than twenty percent of the snaps? He's gonna, he's gonna, I, I get why coaches absolutely hate him. By the way, why? I don't. 
he so he does like things that like would totally irk me. He had a first down last week. He caught a pass over the middle. Just get the first down, dude. He did like he like this stutter step and instead of just going forward, like he just he does things that are just like it would be really irritable if you were coaching him. Yeah, he played 33% of the snaps and they play three running backs. Like I know it's terrible, but I feel like it's just gonna You don't want to play the committee, dude. I'm doing it. You every, every it's just fuel to the fire. When you guys say I can't, it just makes I me played him. I played him on Thanksgiving. I like that. Yeah, I, I was all I, in. I, like I was that. all in on him like on Thanksgiving. It. Be be stubborn. I respect it. He ran so bad. I mean, I, the, my brothers were in on him up. too. I I had yeah. zero of them in one fifty, and my brothers like played them on their mate and their one team. I did they're too. Rooting for him the whole night. They're they're rooting for him the whole game, and I'm just I'm just sitting back watching. You know. Other people like score and they're all they're all tilted and say, my, "Oh, my we girl, almost had a touchdown here. Oh, we almost had a touchdown." We were eating there. Thanksgiving at my at my girl's family's house, and uh, you know I'm sitting there on the TV going, "Come on, just give it to put Swift in, put Swift." In. You know, and they're like, "He had chances, you Kirkwood. How many chances?" Dude, did he, he have got before? in the end zone. He was down by an inch, like by no. yeah, he did. He did get in the end zone. He did. He had yeah. so many reds. He got the two point conversion, which you know. His knee was his knee was what are, should, uh, whatever. I mean, that's the that's the break sometimes. That the thing the is, though, like even if he has a ceiling game, he's competing with a lot of these guys that, like Montgomery's in that range. He's no one there. There's a, there's get what what Swift's price? Fifty six hundred. Yeah, P Ryan. If Mixon is if Mixon is out, like P Ryan, there's absolutely it's just him and Chris Evans in that great game environment. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not saying to play him. I'm just saying I'm going to be playing him. Um, that's... He's in but a great I'll, game environment too, I'll, though. Yeah, maybe I'll, give you, play, but... I'll back up your Derrick Henry. You know, the, everyone thinks of the Eagles as like this good rush D always, but they're, they're not. Tougher. No, he got hurt. And then that's why they brought in a dominant Sue in, and they're, they're trying to patch this thing up. Since week seven, they've been like pretty bad. Um, in, in like a lot of different rushing metrics. So, and the, you know, he, sh- Henry should be able to take advantage of this. And I feel like people are going to like, he's going to be like the one expensive guy that like they, even though he's up there, like projection wise and stuff, like people are going to like, just say, ah, I'm not playing. He's like, Somebody right. has to fall, right? Kirkwood. Like what yeah, he's going to, he's going to fall. It's either him or Nick Chubb. I can't. I can't decide who it's going to be. One of these two dudes, ownership wise, is going to fall. Like so we build. We build with them both. But what do we? What do we? Then we're going to be stuck with our my all the like Zay Jones and. Uh, yeah, you're going to get stuck in that four or five k range. I do think year. there's a, there could be a lot of receivers that we could. We'll we'll get into it. Some cheap receivers that we could, you know, patch that team up with in the end. All right, let's, did let's, go studs. Let's start our way over there. So let's move on over to quarterback. Um, so after his career best gain, Trevor Lawrence is now going to be popular. And as you guys know on this show, I've probably touted Trevor Lawrence a little too much, and I wasn't on him for his best game last week. So that <laughs> that's always feels, the worst. Feels feels bad. Feels bad. Isn't that um, always how it works? Yeah. Um, but you know he's in the dome against Detroit. Great matchup for pass and run. The thing that stands out, I was like digging through. So they're like, so Detroit allows the most fantasy points per game to QBs. So like you can just take that right there at face value. And then they also, but if you dig in, the reason for that is because they allow, they've allowed the most rushing yards um, to, uh, to, to, to QBs and rushing touchdowns to QBs. So then you got to dig in and see who have they played. Well, they played, uh, the Bills, Josh Allen. They've played the, you know, one of those big, massive uh, Justin Fields games. Uh, Danny Dimes, I think, went off against them. Um, let me just double check that because I know they played them, but um, he had fifty yards. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. Um, yeah, fifty yard and a touchdown, right? Like, so yep. that's that's skewing the the numbers, but you know, but Trevor Lawrence can run a little bit. And it's a good thing in the dome, and especially when they get down to the goal line, he gets some chances too um, to to sneak in. So, 
Um, so what I'd say is like, is like, yes, it's a great match of quarterbacks and it's, it's in the dome, but like, it's also a lot of the numbers that are skewing that are, are from these really elite, elite rushing, uh, QBs and he's not one, but I think we can give him an uptick in some production there, which would be nice. Um, I mean, he's actually had a pretty solid five of his last six games. Um, you know, like he hasn't broken the slate or anything, but he's been, been pretty good. He had that awful you know, eight point fantasy game against Denver where he just, they just looked pathetic. But other than that, he's been pretty decent, you know, 25 points against the Colts, 21 against the giants, 17 against the Raiders is disappointing. Um, 21 against KC. And then the, just about 29 points last week against the Ravens. Um, so yeah, I like him. Um, you know, and, and like ownership is going to be like, we don't have like a, 30% like Geno Smith this week, like, like Trevor Lawrence, none of these guys are going to get that kind of ownership. It's going to be spread out. So I don't think ownership really matters this week, unless we got like a minuscule owned play. Um, Deshaun Watson is going to be popular, which is kind of funny because like, we don't really know what to expect in this game, like what he's going to look like after all this. Um, but that's interesting. Joe Burrow looks like the easy play, right? Like 6,900 he's affordable. You'd expect like when, when they they certainly will pass. I mean, like he's had 42 pass. He's had a game this season against Pitt with 53 passing attempts, right? Like the upside is massive in this game. And, and if this game shoots out and, and both of these these guys go going back and forth, it seems like their car is gonna get ownership, but I doubt he really will. It's like he's projected for to have some ownership, it doesn't matter. But there's Herbert. There's Mahomes at 8,300 who's tough to fit. And it's why? Because you want to play him with Travis Kelsey. Well, Travis Kelsey's 7,900 and Mahomes is 8,300. So that's really limits your lineup. So it's tough to get that from an optimizer standpoint. You're going to have to force that in. I still think it's good, but um, I'll be interested to hear your guys' takes there. The other last thing that stands out to me is that like Jalen Hurts is going to be like extremely low owned at 8K. Lamar is going to be extremely low owned at 78. Hundred, um, and Justin Fields is going to be like non-existent. You know, we don't really know what to expect with him if they're going to keep it easy. Like I, I think JSU thinks, like he said, but like there is a world where they don't, and he's just fine and he's good to go. I mean, that is in the range of outcomes, and we could be like, "Damn, why didn't I play this guy at low ownership?" You know, when uh, he, you know, after the season he's been having. But there's a lot of different ways to go. Tua, he's like an afterthought. He's the, I have him here projected ownership of 1.5%. I don't know if that's true, but uh, I mean, against San Francisco, I mean, sure. I mean, at that ownership, why not? But uh, these are the guys that I'm looking at. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Yeah, I for me, like you hit on the guy. I love Joe Burrow. I just think he's in a really good spot. I think if you do want to fade Pierce, I think like I kind of hit on, I think Burrow, P. Ryan, and one of those receivers is a way to kind of get different within the stack, which I think will be um, – just the stack in general is just very hard because Chase is priced up and Higgins is priced up. Uh, so, but it's a game you I think you just want to have exposure to both quarterbacks on the Mahomes side. I don't mind going down to like the Sky Moors or the Justin Watsons and then trying to get Kelsey that way. Uh, it's just the game. It's such it's such a good spot in general. Um, like it's going to be back and forth. I have I, I have no issue trying to get to these two guys as much as possible. In terms of Trevor Lawrence, I I have like just trepidation around his receivers. Even though like Zay Jones had like a career week last week, uh, Christian Kirk, I, I, and I just think people are going to go there. Uh, I don't mind the other side of that game with Jared Goff. Now, when like looking at Goff, you said you don't like I I was kind of off on Swift, but now I'm like. I want I Goff needs two pass catchers. Amon Ra is going to be popular. Maybe Swift is a guy that you have you do take into consideration in Goff stacks because he's pretty much like the pass catching back. Uh, we think for you never know, but it seems like he's the guy that they're throwing the ball to out of the backfield the most. Um, yeah, and then you kind of hit on uh, Jalen Hurts. I, I really like him. I like that game. I think it's sneaky. What about Jimmy Garoppolo? Like he's tied to McCaffrey. You're taking out Elijah Moore. Debo's not there, so it's kind of condensed with Ayuk and Kittle. 
I, I, I'm pretty sure Debo's not is out, right? Or he's like leaning towards doubtful. Um, I think, he, I mean, I think he's truly questionable, but probably like on the lower side of questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a condensed situation in that game. Like we know Miami can play fast, and it's going to be one of the lower owned games on this. In terms of like good games to play, it's going to be uh, one of the lower owned spots. So. I mean, if he's out, I have to have more interest in Ayuk and uh, Kittle. Yeah, right. And it just yeah. becomes condemned. It's very easy. Ayuk, Kittle, McCaffrey at that point, you know, and he's cheap. So he might be Jimmy a nice cheap. We found our Tom Brady replacement. We're, we're all, we're, 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 we're rolling Jimmy, Jimmy G this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's just condensed, right? Like we, ha- it's easy for us to make decisions on where we want to go. And then you have the runbacks. You have Hill, you have Waddle. You know what I mean? It's there for us, you know? I don't know. Those are the guys I, I'm looking at. I, yeah, I mean, Miami's been a cheat code, it seems like. So it's like... What what what, what, what are you cooking up, JSU? Sorry, the wife just walked in and the dog was going nuts. Um, Reggie? Yeah. My kid's like banging a hammer in the other room, so I'm trusting you're good. <laughs> we can't hear that, though. You'll hear my I, dog. I don't know. if you, I've, I've been wondering if you guys can hear it. That's I can't I, hear it. I can't yeah. hear it. But uh, so, first of all, for a quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Kirkwood makes a good point. So, no quarterback's going to be, like, extremely popular to the point where – you're like, you need to fade him. I do think Trevor Lawrence will be the most popular quarterback, you know, in that like 10 to 15% range. Uh, I being a little lower on that game than the other two high total games, I'm not playing Trevor Lawrence because of that. I, I will have a little more Travis Etienne just to kind of leverage off Lawrence, some of, you know, less passing touchdowns, maybe Travis Etienne rushes into hurts Lawrence's ceiling, you know, whatever. Um, and the quarterbacks I'm looking at right now, Joe Burrow, who, who will get some ownership because it's one of the higher total games for sure. But 6,900 is a really nice price tag for Joe Burrow. Um, and I love him when Jamar Chase is back. And it looks like we're going to get Jamar Chase back for this game. I think it just it'll just open up the offense even more. It'll help out all their other receivers too. With Jamar Chase being back, the defense is going to be focused more on other guys or on him. So other guys will have better chance, better looks, maybe less looks, but better, you know, more quality looks. And so I, I love Joe Burrow here. I think that you can pair him with Chase for sure. Tyler Boyd's got a nice price tag. He disappointed. I think he could be someone that bounces back. Um, the Burrow stacks, I think, are just easy to make. You play, you, know one of, you, know, you play one you know, of Higgins or Chase, and then you just maybe you play one of Boyd or Hurst or P. Ryan. Uh, Bobby makes good, if P. Ryan's in as a starter and there's no mix in, I think you can play a P. Ryan in even in the Burrow stacks. I think he fits fine. I think it makes it feel better too. If like if Mixon is out, it just feels better like knowing that like P. Ryan's strength is in the passing game. Yeah. And it's yeah, like I agree. you don't have to and worry about you don't have to worry about the throw. 58 you don't have to worry about the 58 point mixing game, you know, like the- And and I think their plan is to throw uh the Chiefs have always been an aggressive defense. Teams around the league though have figured out not to blitz Burrow as much to, you know, not do that cuz he's very good against the blitz and a lot of teams have figured that out, but the Chiefs are just one of those teams where they're kind of almost like set in their ways. I don't know if they're not going to do it or not, but that could even make it a better spot for Burrow if they are planning to stay aggressive and blitz him. Uh, you have more opportunities for more one-on-one chances with either T or Boyd or Chase or whoever. So uh, I think Burrow's my favorite. Justin Herbert, number two for me. Uh, I already talked about it a little bit, but this is my favorite game. I think Herbert is just rounding into form. We, we saw, you know, passing attempts 47 last game. I think this game goes back and forth too. So I think we see another high, you know, attempt, you know, passing attempt game here for Herbert. And I, I could see an even bigger game, honestly. Like I thought he played – I thought he played better, but still like not as good as he could have played last week. 
And I think it's only going to get better. So I could see an even bigger game this week. And he had 28 last week. So I'll definitely take some Justin Herbert. I don't know, too. Like, at 7,200, I think it's going to keep his ownership, honestly, somewhat in check. Just kind of being around that range on this slate. So the ownership might be even lower than than I think it should be. And I, I love him. Then the other guy would be, I guess, if I'm looking for a cheap guy, it'd probably be Derek Carr in lineups where you're not playing Josh Jacobs. You're kind of leveraging that play. I think there's going to be points on both sides, so you're hoping more on the passing game, right? But I do think it makes sense in tournaments, especially if you might be fading Josh Jacobs on your main team or you're just like, you know, you have some Josh Jacobs, but on your non-Jacobs team, you play car, hope maybe it's a big passing game because Jacobs will get ownership. So, and I don't think even, De- even though Derek Carr may look like he's going to get some ownership, more people are k- clicking the Trevor Lawrence button. Uh, he's going to still at the end fall at like the 5% range probably for ownership, which is fine for Derek Carr. So um, I don't, I don't mind him here. Um, those are really the three quarterbacks I like. I agree with your fields take. My issue is I just, I really worry about like the the running attempts. I do worry about the designed run plays. He could run just scrambling though, right, Kirkwood? He could get there just on on that where he just scrambles. It's a broken play, and he just is gone, right? We've seen it happen where he just hits the Jets and he just runs by the whole defense. Yeah. So that could happen with Justin. And like, Fields. what if what if he's actually a hundred percent healthy? And if he is. I'll probably kick myself for not playing them because he'll probably have a, a good fantasy game. That's that's the truth. Maybe it is something where I should have a sliver. But is this like Justin where we Fields? talk ourselves off, like oh Josh Jacobs is injured and like that, and, and Justin Fields goes off for the with 150 rushing yard breaks in the 80 yard rushing TD, and we're like, and he's three percent owned, and we're like, why didn't we do this? You know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, maybe maybe is someone I should at least say is in play if you have yeah. that feeling of you know, he's, he's fully healthy and ready to go. And then I think the other leverage play in tournaments, and I'm, I'm probably personally not going to get here, but if Zonovan Knight is going to be really popular playing Mike White in the passing game and hoping that their scores are all passing touchdowns, Minnesota's been decent against the run. You can definitely get them though through the air. They've been much worse through the air. So that's a way uh, also to differentiate if he's not going to have as much ownership, Garrett Wilson, you're, you you want to play. Maybe you just double stack it. You play him and Conklin. You play him and Corey Davis, uh, him and Elijah Moore, uh, right, stuff here, like that. The thing about Garrett Wilson is that he's a legit wide receiver one, and he's like cheap every single week. You know what I mean? He was brought down by his card card. I do want to back up one thing because I looked into this game pretty heavily. Uh, first of all, I do love Joe Burrow. And, like, if, like, he – I feel like Joe Burrow should be owned like Geno Smith was owned last week. Like, he should have more, like, ownership than at least yeah. what's being projected right now. Um, Justin Herbert. So, when I look at this matchup against the, the Raiders, so you, the Raiders 32nd DVOA versus the pass. Okay, that's, that's great. It's the best possible passing matchup, right? But – if you dig in to where they give up their fantasy production, production, most of it, they're like the best matchup for like receiving backs, right? So they give up 500 and they've given up the most yards, 599 to receiving, to receiving running backs. They've also give up the third most touchdowns to receiving running backs. Well, what's the strength of the chargers? It's Eckler, right? Like that's a massive Eckler spot screaming to me. They also give up a ton of production in the slot. Well, who's over there? Well, it's Keenan Allen. So it's like you're telling me that like the best possible matchups in this game on the side are Eckler and Keenan Allen. Like Herbert should absolutely smash, right? Like the like this this it almost seems too easy. Um, so I'm there. I mean, look at that secondary Kirkwood. And their yeah. secondary is just crushed. They got guys in there that. I mean, should not be st- starting really, to be to be honest. I mean, you look at that secondary. Rocky Asin, we we've targeted him for DFS for years. He's on the Colts for a while. Uh, Tyler Hall on the other side. I, Ty- Tyler Hall, Jayon Brown. The, these guys are not uh, 
you know, guys we should be worried about playing. So, or playing going up against, I think Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer. I love Josh I think Palmer. One or, I think one or two of these guys have monster games. And I talked about it last week on the, on the up to lock show I did, but Deandre Carter, another guy, he's playing a ton. I was like, Josh Palmer and Keenan Allen are both going to get ownership. If, if, if you want to be different in your Herbert stacks, play Carter with one of those two. It, it, like do something like that, and he's not going to get owned again. The guy's been on the field like 75% of his snaps last week. He's going to keep playing. He's not going to get ownership. He fits in a double stack where Herbert spreads it around, and he's like the cheap guy that gets there again. Like I could see it again. He's 3,900 coming off a 10 target game and he's still not going to really project or get ownership. So I would make sure, especially if you're an MME guy and you're high on this game and you're high on Herbert, you're high on Jacobs car, all, 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 the, just the whole game in general, I would make sure to keep Carter in your pool and, and get some of him in your Herbert double stacks. Cause I do think he's just on the field too much not to, you know, not to get some looks and he's the, the deep guy. He's, I mean, he's Mike. He's Mike Williams for all you care. Well, about. well, but the defense is keying in on Keenan Eckler, yeah. right? So Carter is going to get more of the one-on-one looks than anybody else, probably, right? He's like the last person they're thinking of. So it makes sense, uh, you know, when you look at it. He fits well in double stacks too. Last little nugget on Herbert. He's been playing injured for most of the season, right? And he's still second in passing attempts. It's like, so they, they are a passing offense, right? Like Eckler's strength is in the passing game, get him in space. It's like, so it just, it just, and now they have like the best possible matchup. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm playing. That game's going to crush. Like, yeah, that I, does, that's, that's going to be like all, lose, all my high, all my high all dollar stuff is going to be. But like, I'm just going to go in on that. Game. That game's going to crush. Like, I'm with you. the let's first team I built this week was like a Herbert Josh Palmer team with Eckler. So let's go, yeah. boys. This is week. Yeah. This is our week. This is, yeah. let's, this is the game. I love it. Uh, love all it. right. Let's, uh, I mean, should we touch on Mahomes? Should we touch? Did we touch on any? We touched on. I just right? struggle paying like eight three for anyone on or eight k plus for anyone on this slate. Yeah, just personally. play Burrow and like try to fit in Kelsey. That's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Right. If you want to play Kelsey, that's the way to do it. Uh, you know what I mean? Or or play a cheap quarterback and and and, and get Kelsey and get like the secondary stack with this game. Play play Kelsey and Chase with a a. a you know, a Derek Carr, Foster Moreau, oh, Keenan Allen stack. Like, I Derek, don't know, something is, like that's that. That's your first choice, Derek Carr? Come on, dude. Well, I was thinking of cheap quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence, yeah. Zay Jones. Uh, Jimmy I'm not G. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, we already gave you the Jimmy B. G. We already gave you Jimmy G. Oh, Jimmy G. No fucking sh- shot I'm playing Jimmy <laughs> G. Uh, can't right. do it. I can play a receiver, though, from Jimmy G. I'll play a Jawan Johnson uh, or Jennings. Yeah. Sorry, Jawan Jennings. Jawan I'll Jennings. play a George Kittle, a, Br- a Brandon Ayuk. I'll play one of those. So, guys, what about but... Tua? Are we like to- we haven't hit on Tua at all? Are we totally out on Tua? I can't play Tua. Did you see what happened to him once that tackle went down? If no. that if Armstead's definitely out, I can't play, and I'm pretty sure he is. I can't play Tua. All right. He no, got too. crushed, but but he got sacked three times in a row right after that that left tackle. Armstead went out of the game. That's and good to know. You're probably saving me have some a money. good D. Like, I don't want to steal Bobby Gomes' defensive segment, but I will say I've been running hot in the defensive segment the last two weeks. I gave, out the Miami, I gave out the Miami Dolphins last week. I forget what defense I gave out the week before. Chiefs were still good last The Chiefs were good last week. Chiefs? They were still were they fine. For, yeah, they, they were, were fine. fine. Yeah. But the Miami Dolphins crushed. Yeah, I, I had Miami. It was, it was stupid because everyone had Miami on Yahoo because yeah. they were so cheap. Um, the worst thing about Miami last week was I correlated them with Wilson, and then I when I just should have just again though it it almost leveled it out, right, Bob? Like when yeah. you put those two together, because you probably weren't playing the Miami D without Wilson, so yeah. like it was fine. It like made it feel better. It's fine in single entry, but in MME, I wish I had like let them play by themselves my point yeah. though is you weren't playing them without wilson yeah. probably 
Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. That was the way to differentiate Wilson. Who, who was the who was the best play? Who was the best play from that game? Was it Waddle? On yeah. the Miami side, who was the honestly? Uh, Wilson was bad, and he was one of the better like scoring plays. That game kind of like just disappointed in general. Waddle did drop a few big passes. I will yeah, say he, he could have had a monster game. He dropped a few passes. Yeah, he didn't get a touchdown. So he had 10, 10 targets, for only five receptions for 85 yards. I he just remember him. He easily being- had 20 plus fantasy points. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm positive he dropped a, a few big plays. All right. So let's move it on over to wide receiver. So wide receiver at the top of the list from an ownership standpoint. Well, from the high end, it's going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. At 7,100, just elite level usage. Big game against Buffalo, 10 targets, nine receptions, 122 yards, and a touchdown. Um, even had a designed rush. Um, going to be the top play. Garrett Wilson is going to be the chalk of the day at 5,300. He's a wide receiver one in a good matchup against Minnesota with a quarterback that certainly looks better than Zach Wilson did and uh, still too cheap. Okay, he is too cheap. So that's going to be the debate with ownership and price and upside and ceiling and all that. What's crazy is I had Zay Jones last week at 1% ownership. Well, now he's going to be 16 to 20%, somewhere 15 to 20%, somewhere in that range. Uh, Christian Kirk, you know, is going to be high on two, 6,300. These guys are going to, you know, they get a good amount of volume, great ta- target share in the dome, great game. Um, I get it. They're, they're, they are good plays, I think, but um, it is a little scary from ownership. There's Devontae Adams. There's Amari Cooper. There's T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. We've got a lot of places to go. Um, what are we What are we doing, Bobby? Yeah, so let me just pull this up quick. I, For me, it's going to be Amon Ra. Like, I just think he grades out super well. I think it's going to be Amon Ra for a lot of people, though. Um. Keenan Allen, just another phenomenal spot. We kind of, when we were going over the Chargers, we hit on him. I think he's a really good play. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, he's kind of low owned. It seems like it seems like, like yeah, it seems that's like gonna he, steam. That's gonna steam. That's right? gotta get steamed. Yep. T Higgins, seventy two hundred. Higgins and Chase, like maybe whoever comes in more low owned, but we still need like a clean. I just Chase could have played last week, I guess. So like, it's just teams have kind of been scheming towards taking away way chase and we see like a, a very good rapport in recent weeks with burrow and higgins um probably have both of them for what it's worth uh christian kirk i feel like he's a guy that everyone's gonna play with with um trevor lawrence i don't think i'm playing lawrence but i think i will play some kirk uh, love the name love the name yeah he's a good name so it's good mojo there uh these are we interested in like these cleat like I, I don't know Armari Cooper and Donovan Peoples Jones, I, I think they're they're firmly in play. Donovan Peoples Jones probably more for me than Cooper, being that he's like four nine. It's a significant price difference. Um, Seattle receipt like I don't mind Tyler Lockett. I think he's fine at six k. Trying to go through. Um, I got I got two. Yeah, give me how are, how are we not interested in AJ Brown or Devontae Smith against what should be a pass funnel? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the Titans are a complete pass funnel. AJ Brown revenge. I know we're not usually revenge guys, but there there was like some bad blood there at the end. I feel like AJ Brown wanted to get signed. So I I, I definitely like AJ Brown. I like that call a lot. Uh Devontae Smith too, like their short area targets. He's fantastic, like getting to him. And Josh Palmer at 5'6". I, I, I really like Palmer for some reason. Like, I think he's just a little cheaper than Allen. He's not – Mike Williams is still out. Um, I think he makes for a really solid play. He was one of the guys that really stuck out to me. Garrett Wilson's going to be the chalk. He's – he's Garrett Will like after we seen last week, he's at 5'3". I think Palmer's an interesting pivot if you, try to, if you wanted to make that happen. Um, but I also think Garrett Wilson's likely good chalk too. So, uh, who who else? Traylon Burks, Nico Collins is at four two, under five K. Traylon Burks at four six. Sky Moore is at three one. 
Justin Watson, 3-2, some of those Mahomes guys. Um, Christian Watson at 5-2 I think is interesting for uh, Green Bay. That's pretty much all I get. What do you get, Kirkwood? Yeah, that's all I got all of them. But uh, I do like that uh, Watson call. I mean, he is the guy. Like, everyone's saying, oh, I- I'm not worried about Alan Lazard. Give me, like, Watson all day. Yeah, you can't um, put – Lazard has no ceiling, dude. It's just, like, so irritating. But uh, Johnny AirPods has some uh, – he's been cooking up something over here. So what do we, what do we got? Yeah, just speaking on Watson, too, they got a safety out. They got a cornerback out for the Bears. So the Bears' defense was already bad, and then you put those things in. Uh, you know, I think Christian Watson makes for a really good tournament play. Probably won't project as well either, but big play upside is definitely there. And, and like red that. zone upside. Touchdown equity is, is – Yeah, upside. touchdown equity is for sure there. Romeo Dobbs is is something – you know, he might be back for this game, so that's at least something to at least keep in mind. But I do think Christian Watson is at least – he at least has that, that second, like that main outside receiver role kind of locked up or should at least um, – as of right now, so I'm not as worried about that. I, I like him, but starting at the top because uh, we'll just go down. But my favorite guys, I mean, I love Derrick Henry at running back, I love AJ Brown as a correlation play on the other side, and just because I'm not playing Jalen Hurts or Ryan Tannehill, but I definitely want a, a, a passing target for Philly. I mean, Tennessee's really good against the run. Um, one thing about Philly. They knew against Green Bay last week that they had the advantage on the ground. And what'd you see? They just pounded the rock. I mean, Jalen Hurts was running all over them. Miles Sanders, all these guys were getting touchdowns on the ground. They knew that against Green Bay. Now it's like the opposite matchup. They're coming into Tennessee. They're coming in. They're going to be probably saying, we have a better advantage letting that ball air out. A.J. Brown, $7,800. I don't know how much ownership he's going to get, but I don't think it's going to be very high, honestly, at 7,800. And it helps that he really hasn't had a monster game in a few weeks. I mean, the last 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 like big game he had was the 42 gamer uh, 42 point game against Pittsburgh, where he caught the three touchdowns. But outside of that, it was Detroit in week one. He's had two big fantasy games the entire year, pretty much. Outside of that, his his best was 19 against Washington, which is, you know, at 7,800, a dude gets you 19, you're not really that pumped, right? So uh, you, want, you want your guy to have big stuff, and he just hasn't done it. So he's not going to project well, which I like. So I'm definitely going to bump him up. I'm going to be heavy on him. Keenan Allen's number two for me. You guys talked about it. I, I The targets are going to be there. I think he's going to be open whenever Herbert needs them. Chain mover, just 6,500. And I, I, I don't think the ownership is going to be I – don't, I don't even think it's going to get steamed. I think it's going to be like wherever it says, like I don't know, between like 8 and 12%, somewhere in that range he's going to be, which I'll, I'll take all day for Keenan Allen. Um after that, Jamar Chase, if he's in and he's fully, he's a full go, I'm in on Jamar Chase. is a good matchup. Aggressive defense in KC. Like Joe Burrow, going to pair him with Chase. Um, you guys hit on Amon Ra and Christian Kirk, who I do think will be the two more popular pass catchers in that game. And I think there's pivots. Like Zay Jones is the obvious pivot, but he's going to get ownership too. But, like, Amon Ra, DJ Chark is $3,800. He was good last week when I watched him. He played 70% or or a little over 70% of the snaps. He got five targets. He he only got two catches for, like, 16 yards and a touchdown. But he had another opportunity for a touchdown earlier, and then Jared Goff missed him wide, running – but naked, wide open on the right side to win the game, pretty much. And he just, or maybe not win the game, but to to at least get them ahead of the Bills to make it something. And he just missed them, just completely missed them. I don't know if you guys remember that play. It was at the end of the game on the right side, 
and he was just wide open. Jared Goff just to the right missed him, but he could have easily had a touchdown there. So I think DJ Chark is a really good play. No one's going to play him. He's $3,800. Uh, that's a guy that you can throw in as like a final piece um, if you're stacking that game, or even if you just want a piece of that game, but you want like a lower own piece, I, I think him. And then, you know, the, the only receiver that's not going to get much love from the Jaguars and rightfully so is Marvin Jones. But I do think he's leveraged off of, you know, Zay and Christian Kirk who are going to get ownership. Um, so I do think from that standpoint against Detroit, he at least makes sense to have, you know, in your builds. And, uh, you know, especially if you're fading like one of the one or two of those pass catchers that are going to be um, highly owned. At least you have some leverage there. You don't need a, a lot to, to, to get over on him, but uh, that's just that game. Uh, other guys. I got one. Just got, you got, you got one. Well, I kind of scan it out. Ayuk at 6,100. If Debo's out, just seems like a smash to me. Against I like Juwan Jennings if too. Debo's out. Juwan Jennings is $3,200. Yeah, I can see that too. That is so cheap for for Jennings if Debo is out because that just opens up his role even more. I think you're right though. Ayuk it opens up his role too. I I would agree there. And then uh, we what about Scary Terry? The Giants are 28th in DVOA versus the pass. I I just I, can't play him. I the play this guy. Is- I I know I play him too much because I'm just like I just know there's big big play upside with him, but the problem is that their offense stinks. <laughs> the problem is. Taylor Heineke, he's not the, – the quality of target is not there. The targets are there, but the quality is not there. He's throwing it at his ankles, behind him, whatever. Um, so Terry has to make good catches. But at the same time, the offense just doesn't throw enough, in my opinion, where you're like, you need him to get there early to do it. And I just see this game being kind of slower – like every Giants game, they just 20 to 20 to 17 type game. And I, that's not, that's not the game on this slate that I want to have much exposure to outside of like a super cheap guy. And he's just, I don't know, 5,800 to me. I like other guys kind of. Yeah. Like Christian Watson game. seems like such a better play if, if Dobbs is eh, maybe not. I mean, scary Terry is the one, the wide receiver one though. That's the thing to, to. Yeah. He is just on an offense that doesn't even like yeah, to pass it 30 yeah. times. That's uh, like I struggle with it. Yeah, I hear you. Good point. All right. Um, any final uh, gems in there? George Pickens. Can I interest anybody in? I, just I like, like your that D- game. I like your chart call. I agree. He he looked pretty like he when I I was like when I saw him playing in the beginning of the game on Thanksgiving, I was like, oh, he looks good. Like I, this was a mistake not to play DJ Shark at thirty eight hundred or whatever the heck he was. Yeah, is that game I, I in Atlanta, love the that last game? Uh, what's up? Is that in Atlanta the uh, Pittsburgh game? Yeah. Is, yeah, I, I would have interest in Pickens. In yeah, game. a little dome action. Yeah, low ownership, uh, fifty one hundred. I, I, I think even if you don't play Justin Fields, if you think that there's less running for him, the other thing is he might stand in the pocket a little more and try and throw it down the field. So a guy like Claypool might be more in play at 3,800 with no Mooney. Um, Byron Pringle got a, got more snaps than I thought last game. He was out there for over half the snaps. Um, but I do think Claypool makes some sense if you think like Fields kind of tries to air it out a little more and sit back in the pocket. Um, he might be a guy that we're kind of overlooking that. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm on board there. I'm writing that down. Who was it? Claypool. Claypool. Yeah. I just forgot. I just I like too many people. We're with We've yeah. had a pretty good. Uh, I think we've had a pretty good. Like uh, you know, we we haven't recommended a ton of people. You know what I mean? It's. No, I think I think it's a pretty good show. I think down. you want to know what it is. We're not doing it at midnight. Like always, I like, like that. I was just thinking that in my head. I really like this time slot. We feel fresher. 
You know I, what I mean? I, I think this is JSU's you know, probably already already dead, already done 50 burpees at home. And, I got uh, this is my second coffee, and it's only you know it, it's only like almost kid know, ran noon, a marathon so. earlier. I, I feel good right now. I'm not gonna lie. I feel whenever I get my coffee intake in it early, I feel good. So that that's the key with me at, at night. The coffee's worn out, you know what I mean. I'm, 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 I'm worn down by the time the night hits. So, I, I do like the mornings. We'll say. And then, and you got the, the digestion going from that buffalo chicken sub. It's just a, just a big. I, I didn't get it yesterday, Kirkwood. I, 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 I couldn't get it because I, you know, I took the wife out and we went to, uh, with her, her, her friend and uh, her boyfriend. They, we went out to uh, Bocado, which was get uh, some tapas to get some tapas. Yeah, some tapas. That, you know. I'd never been either, so it was cool. Nice. All right, tight end. This is, gets a little interesting because we want to play Travis Kelsey, right? Like he's a he's ridiculous, seventy nine hundred. Um, but he's also hard, expensive, and hard to get. So other guys that are going to get ownership are going to be like Fryermuth, going to be uh, Foster Moreau, going to be Tyler Conklin, maybe Hayden Hurst, maybe Mark Andrews for sure. Um, what are what are we thinking here? What are, what are we doing? I think Harrison Bryant's gonna end up being the chalk at twenty seven hundred for what it's worth. Yeah, really? I think uh, Fryermuth, Harrison Bryant, um, maybe Foster Moreau. Like those are probably the three highest owned tight ends, and then after that, you'll see Kelsey and you know, the rest in order. Yeah, well, yeah, he's kind of been around 5K all, but yeah. He's another guy that's a good play. Like if, if Debo is out, I think he's a better With Debo play. Out, good that, price is, that price is more like I, – I, I like It's that. a good matchup too against Miami. Like look, look at what happened. So Houston was terrible. And we're, we're talking about tight end, so I will bring this up because I, I do think he's in play as a cheap guy. But one thing that uh, – Kyle Allen did do, and they did uh, kind of go after, was the tight end. And Jordan Akins wasn't great either. For fantasy, he was, though. He had a nice fantasy game. He had 16 fantasy points. He was 5 of 5. He obviously had that fumble. When you guys remember, they they clocked him after that catch, and he, and he dropped it. Um, but he was good, and he had the touchdown at the end, um, obviously. But 2,900 for him. I do think Miami's exploitable against the tight end too. So I could see a big Kittle game. It's probably why I'll have less IU too. I think I like Kittle a little bit more if Debo's out. Yeah, give me a 5K. Let's go. Yeah. But let, let's talk about Harrison Bryant. I mean, okay, I get it. And Joku's out. He's cheap, right? Uh, he's playing Houston. Houston, they've given up their like the 13th most fantasy points per game to the tight end. But, like, he also has pretty good competition in Chubb, Hunt, Amari Cooper, like, and this is a game that they should be controlling. So, like, how much work are they really going to need out of this guy? I get it. He's 2,700, but he's also coming in, like, at, like, 15 to 20% ownership. Well, I think he's going to be out on the field a ton. I mean, whether he gets targeted a lot. I don't know. I mean, Deshaun Watson's gone to the t- – like, I could see him getting some targets here. I, I don't think he's a terrible play. I, I do think Deshaun Watson isn't a great play, though. I, I will say we didn't really talk about him that much, but I don't like him if he's getting ownership. Uh, I just think that a guy coming off – he hasn't played in a while. I don't know how you play him. Yeah, like, I just think it's a terrible play. Like, just – it's such a terrible play at 6,500. My thought Even is is that we Houston. we should be trying to bury Harrison Bryant. We should be trying to get, like, a massive Kittle game, a massive massive Kelsey game, or a, a massive Mark Andrews game even or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's other cheap tight ends, though, too. I, Foster Moreau's 3,600. I think he's a good play. Hayden Hurst in your double stacks with Burrow, I think, is fine. He got, like, nine targets last game. I, like, I think those are good plays. I, I think I'm, I'm fine, you know, going elsewhere. I don't need to play Harrison Bryant, but I, I'm not going to – I'm, I'm going to keep him in the pool. I won't say he's, like, not in play. I don't hate Conklin at 3-1. 
Yeah, he's another guy going up against his old team too, right? He was from Minnesota, or uh, yeah. I think he played for Minnesota. All right, I'm in. A little revenge. I never can't. I can't say no to can't revenge. Can't turn down the revenge. Can't turn down revenge. Cole Komet. All right. Uh, yeah, Komet. I think Komet's fine. Yeah. Green Bay. Yeah, Komet's fine. They they have less. I mean, Donald Mooney out. He's been what well, you know. He was used with fields a, a good if amount. If the shoulder's an issue, too, it's a short area target. Yeah. Yeah, he makes sense. All Won't right, get right. ownership either, Kirkwood. Ever, and Gerald Everett. Green Bay is not even. great against tight ends. No one's going to play Everett. He's overpriced. He's overpriced, yeah. What's his price? 4400 4, Yeah. He was 46 last week, and people played him. Everyone's going to play Friar I, Muth I in him. that range. Everyone's going to play Friar Muth at 4,300 yeah. over Everett in that range. That's Friar Muth. All right, Bobby, take it home, DST. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland Browns going to be my leverage defense if Pierce kind of kicks up his chalk. 3,900, and you can pair him with Chubb if you want. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but uh, – yeah, I don't mind the Browns. I also don't mind the Texans. Like, if people are actually going to play Deshaun Watson, at the Texans' defense at 2,300 makes a ton of sense just because uh, w- what do we really know about Watson at this point? Like, he's a, he hasn't played in so long, you know? But he, can, but he can hand it off to Nick Chubb. He can do that. He can. But the Texans are 2,300. So, and they're at – I think they're at home, right? Yep. Yeah, they are. They're at home. They're at home. Yeah, so – yeah, those are my. I like it. I, I like it, Bob. I, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm good with those defenses. I have the them Jets. in my, I have them in my list of five. I, I do a player pool, so I, they're, they're two of my defenses. You only play five. Um, I only play five too usually. Five, five defenses. Yeah, yeah. every week I play five, and uh, they're two of my defenses. Um, but I do have uh, the 49ers ahead of them. Um, I really like the 49ers defense, 3,100. Just, just list out the five. Just give the whole five. I'll, gi- I'll give them all. And so the Ravens are one. I think the Ravens just demolish Russell yeah. Wilson yeah. Um, at, at home, too. Uh, Steelers, 49ers, Browns, Texans in that order. Uh, t- Steelers are just too cheap, even in Atlanta. I think they're just 2,600 for that defense that's uh, getting healthy. You know, walk back, meet the back, all those guys. I think that that's just r- really uh, too too cheap. And then I talked about Tua without the tackle. And if uh, Armstead, the left tackle, is going to be out, I think the 49ers defense is uh, in for a really good spot here uh, and could get a bunch of sacks with Tua. And it's just something where, like, t- man, Tua just keeps getting crushed and crushed and Eventually, like, the guy's going to go out again with an injury. I mean, last week, the Texans contorted him in ways I didn't even think were humanly possible. Do you guys see some of those sacks where he's just like – I don't even know how he does it, too. Yeah, I I, I know that one where they, like, dragged him down. Like, it looked like it was, like, WWE. Yeah, it's just crazy how he gets into those situations game in and game I feel like every game he gets at least one of those sacks where it just looks – yeah, you're so like, uh oh. Like you see yeah. it coming, like you're like, uh oh. Um, all right, what about the commanders against the Giants? They were in my my thought process, but I I, I ruled them out of my five, but I, I don't mind I don't mind it. I just and then the Jets are the Jets these. are still cheap. Twenty six hundred. I know Minnesota's good, but yeah. I like those two calls. Commander right. Daniel Jones and then Kirk Cousins, Jets, he's been getting takeaways, you know. I like it. All right, let's do it. Uh, final stacks here for single-entry large field. Um, I'm going to start it off, just get it out of the way. You know where I'm going. And I'm, we may – you know what? It's fine if we're all going the same place this week because I feel like that's like – at least we can like go down as a show. Like we can all crush together or, or not. But like it's going to be Herbert. And I got to figure out, I want to play Keenan Allen. I want to get Eckler in there if I can. I don't know if I can, but um, there's just so much, <clears throat> so many ways to play this game. There's Devontae Adams. There's 
Josh Jacobs bring it back. Um, so I'm going to go Herbert to Keenan Allen as my number one stack. And, uh, man, I guess I'm going to bring it back with Jacobs, but maybe do Devontae Adams. I don't know. It's tough. But that that's the game I'm focusing in on. Boys. JSU, you go because you talked up Herbert a good bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't go away from it. That's my favorite stack. I, I love Keenan, too. Uh, I'm right with Kirkwood. I think, like, a, a Herbert double stack with Herbert, Keenan, and then one other Chargers guy uh, re- receiving option. And then you bring it back with, like, Jacobs, Moreau, or something like that, and then just, you know, finish out your teams however you want. I will say just to give like a, a little bit of a contrarian take, but I think that AJ Brown and Derrick Henry are the two highest scoring at their position. Um, I'll just throw that in there to to add to the uh, the final takes here for this slate because I do think AJ Brown and Derrick Henry both crush, and I think there's points in that game, which is which is good. You know, I think that that game goes over the total, and uh, we see a good game. All right, I'm hoping Bobby says the guy that I'm thinking in my head right now. I, yeah, I like Herbert also. Oh. But I, like, I like him with Joshua Palmer. No, I was think I was saying, come on, Bobby, do Jimmy G. Oh no, I, I, Jimmy G is good, but he made a good point. I worry about like when he said the 49ers D, you take away arm. Like I worry about Tua, but that game just with the condense how condensed it is. Like yeah, I like it for secondaries. Um, yeah, I definitely I think you can make a case for getting like McCaffrey or Waddle, stuff like that. Um yeah, that's pretty much uh what I what I was thinking for that. I I don't hate Jimmy G that he's like connected to McCaffrey. I think McCaffrey could have a big week. All right. Is that a wrap, boys? That's a wrap. I That's like it. I think I, we're in a good are we going to continue this time slot? The ten. This Bobby really likes this time slot. We might have to. If we well, ship this week, Bob, we definitely have to. I think we have to, to anyway we because, like, I'm pretty much booked up till three now every Friday. Yeah, and I know JSU is like he can. Your your schedule is like before three, and then yeah, uh, Friday is just insane for me because all the all the stuff I got. It took us thirteen yeah. weeks to figure this out, but. We finally that's all right so have, it'll have it'll either be i mean i this was probably a better show than our last week's show so uh we'll see so uh oh, this show is a banger we're gonna yeah, ship this, this, week. this i week. feel yeah. good about this, this week. Week. i feel I good like about this show too. good mojo good about this show. week i think we're, we're coming in hot all right let's get it boys and uh everybody listening let's get it um comment tell us uh your thoughts tell us our bad takes good takes whatever just uh, comment below. Make fun uh, of us, whatever you want to do. Um, we got UFC to Electric Day today. We got UFC tonight. Let me, let me pull up quickly because I got. I'm about to take my drive over to New Hampshire if I can get free um, for a bit to place a couple of wagers. Um, I do have some plays. Hold on, I got to pull it up. All right, I'm definitely taking Philip Rowe. Uh, he is a slight dog to Nico Price. Um, anywhere from wow, I guess he's he's the lines just moved, so I'm getting a bad line now at this point because I haven't gone. It was 115 earlier, it's like 105 right now, plus 105. But I like him to beat uh Nico Price. Um, wait, who is it? Who, who is it? You like? Phil Rowe, Phil, the Fresh Phil Prince. Rowe. Okay, the yep. Fresh Prince. Um, other than that, oh, I also think that Ty Tuvasa is too big of a price here. Uh, he's plus 180. This guy almost just beat Cyril Gone. This he, it's like basically with his he's gonna he's he doesn't have a ground game, but Pavlovich is not gonna use like the ground game. This is gonna be like a banger, like a boxing. They're just gonna bang. And what he does is he's he makes it. It's he's like Michael Chandler. It's gonna be like a 50-50 coin flip, and you're getting plus 180. Like you're gonna get like. It's going to be like 50-50 who knocks who out in this because he's they're not going to wrestle. If, if he wrestles, he'd be a big – if uh, Pavlovich wrestles, he'd be a uh, – Tuvasa would be a big dog, but it's not going to happen. 
and they're gonna they're gonna bang. And I if they're banging, I say it's 50-50. So give me the plus 180 all day on Ty Tufasa. Plus, if he wins, you get that extra equity of doing a shoey. I mean, it's electric. The whole thing is <laughs> the electric. shoey is great. I do love yeah. I do love too that people do it like in the stands after. Like that's yeah. just that's badass when you can get a guy just take off his shoe, dump a beer in it, and drink it. Like you did that, buddy. That's pretty cool. Uh, those are my two favorite. Uh, I'll probably play Kevin Holland. I don't really like the price. I'm not sure. Um, I think – I don't know. There are some live dogs, though, up and down. I'm not going heavy this slate. I, like I did like the, the one where I swept the board a couple weeks, the, the last main slate. It was uh, – I went heavy there. This one I'm, I'm, I'm lighter, but I like – overall, this is a really competitive card. So let's get some UFC in tonight. The thing is it's going to go forever. It's not starting until 7 o'clock, and then there's there's like more fights than there ever have been, so it's going to be perfect late. perfect for me. Now, I'll be right when I get back from dinner. I'll be ready to put the UFC on, yeah. play some hoop, sit back, watch and then, some winners. And then we got uh, – a problem is, is it screws me up for having to, with Bobby and I do the show and the Grinders Live that people should be watching on, on RG in the morning if they're not watching the Run Pure uh whatever you guys got going on but uh either way we got you covered um some of our best takes just come to us tomorrow morning and some of our worst takes come afterwards like the, the michael <laughs> carter like so uh that's the dfs trap right right there i will just say before we get out of here i just want to shout out my guys uh big big t in the college football uh championship today which is saturday because we're recording this early on saturday good luck to him and that, uh, my boys Tambo and Kay Fallick at the King of the Beach uh, this weekend. Uh, so Sunday, uh, hopefully uh, one of those two guys ships uh, King of the Beach tomorrow and uh, takes that first place home. I know Tambo's been close the last few years. I think he's been like Dude, second. Of course he's going to ship. Like so Tambo. He's Tambo. Gotta, it, it's got to be first place for Tambo or bust. Like it, it has to be. It has Tambo to be. first or last, buddy. First or last. That's how we take it down. He knows. And Dan no. Bach's out there too, so good luck to Dan Bach. Oh, um, shout out Dan, Dan Bach. Yeah, is is does he got a seat in the King of the Beach? Yeah, he's there. Yeah. He's there. I All think right. he has two. I don't they, know. They, I don't even know what the King of the Beach is. is. I've never, I've never entered a King of the Beach. Like, it's. I've never... actually that was when I met Dan Bach years ago. That was how I met Dan Bach. Was actually at the King of the Beach. I'm pretty sure that was the first time I ever met him. I was rarely the, play I think it was the first one they ran, too. It was like the first one they ever ran, which was the, the one I, I, I won and went to. And uh, he was there. And that was how I uh, wow, was we how I actually got started. So, yeah. We Shout out Dan Bach. May, hopefully, may, I, I hope Dan ships. If my guys don't ship, I hope Dan ships. Love Dan. Look at that. Look at that. Uh Hour 47 minutes. Sorry about the length this week. Uh, watch it at 1.5. Oh, don't say sorry for greatness. What do you mean? This was a great podcast. What are, you, what are you talking about? Don't don't say sorry. Don't apologize. All right. You're right. Uh, you're welcome, everybody. That's, 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 you're welcome for the hour and 45 minutes of great content by ah, Jason Rabb. You, Rab, need that, you need that energy to get up here a little bit when you tell people you're not sorry. I need that energy up. All right, I'm not sorry. What you're welcome, you know. There you, you are go. welcome. Um, all right, let's ship. Let's make some money. We got banger of a day here. USA lost. I was gonna slam against them, but uh, then that flu worried me. But I'm I'm driving let like, UFC tonight. We're shipping football tomorrow. Shipping showdown in the nighttime. Uh, let's do it. Big weeks for everybody, for all the listeners, for us, for JSU Rab, for Bobby Gomes. Uh, this has been the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast. Run Pure Sports Collaboration Week 13, and we'll catch you next week. Thanks.